This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, it is the Ramble. The Ramble goes on until uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm your humble host. And we'll get to our citizens panel in about a half hour from right now. But uh, as we like to do uh, uh, once a week, we like to talk to one of our dear, good old friends. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we go out to California and talk with one of our favorite people in the whole world. I really love talking with you. Because you, you, this is Larry Larry Bubbles. You're the, you're the only one. But. Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, I'm the only one that enjoys talking with you. You're my last friend, buddy. Hey, really? Am, am I really? No, I'm sure. I think you, so. I'm sure you have lots of friends. I, I think uh, in this business, I think we have a lot of acquaintances. I don't know if we have ah, any friends, do ah, we? I, that's what I always tell people, you know. I say I only have like, right now I only have one friend in the whole world. I mean... Aside from you, uh, and you become a good friend just through these things, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but but my my biggest friend is uh, is Shecky, oh, you know, uh, my friend Rick Sheckman who worked for Letterman for all those years. Yeah. And, but he's the best friend by default because I had three best friends and two of them are now dead. <laughs> that so, happens as we age, but. Shecky sounds like a, such an interesting guy. I'd love to meet him. Well, anytime you're in New York, I'll introduce you, or if I can drag him out to California, certainly I will introduce you to him. Yeah, uh, so is he retired now? Uh, he's pretty. Yeah, he's retired. He he really, you know, he has a lot of money because he uh, he invested well and he inherited some money, and so he's uh, he's very well to do. He's he's my well to do friend. All right. Uh, he could, but he could probably write a book about the Letterman show, couldn't he? Well, yeah, but he is in 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 a book about the Letterman show. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think he would ever write it because you know, I mean, come on, there are there are tons of other people who could write the same book. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because there were people. Who were, of course, he was of all the people that worked at the Letterman show. I think he was number three in pecking order so far as length of time having worked at the show. He was there from almost the beginning, right? He, he was there. He, I think, got in about a year in, if I remember correctly. And um, everybody else has left. And uh, it was like uh, he and a woman named Jude, I think, and one other person. He was either third or fourth, something like that. So, you know, I, he saw it all come and go, you know. Yeah. Well, he was with the morning, you know, with the uh, NBC show. And then he went over to CBS with with Dave because Dave took the whole crew. Anybody who wanted to come with him, um, even if the camera people, I think, or something wanted to leave NBC, Dave said, "I'll find a job <laughs> for you." You know, uh, that was cool. I mean, that's the, uh, one thing about Dave was he was very loyal to his staff. I mean, yeah, they, that's uh, something you don't get much of. So that's uh, that's good for him. The story I get is that he waited years more than he wanted to to quit because he didn't want to put all these people out of work you know because when he quit how many people were out of work the only people left were the people who were cbs employees who were the cameramen and all the technical people they were they were hired by nbc by cbs Mm. and i think he uh i think he actually paid the writers when the strike was on yes he did that money he did that as well i mean he uh he always treated his crew marvelously, and I think that is something. I learned that that was something he had to do when I was doing my show in San Francisco, and when I was suddenly burdened with a with a crew of about ten people, is that you really had to be good to them because they can make you look like shit. <laughs> and where, where it's even worse is in television. I mean, when I was doing the uh, the stuff over at KGO, like you log in TV. Whenever we do a piece, there were at least five or six people with me, cameraman, sound person, lighting person, makeup person, you know, all of that. And that you had to be exceedingly nice to those people because if anybody could make you look like shit, it would be them. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, the makeup person could really do it. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. And um, that, you know, if they watch, if you're good to them, they watch out for you. Hey, Alex, there's a little schmutz on your shirt there. You better clean it off. And, uh, um, you know, your hair's a little must or whatever. You know, they're, they're there trying to make you look good. But if you're a piece of shit to them, they just let you make all your mistakes and look like crap, you know. So you have to be really good to them. And I felt I had made my bones in the television business when at our rap party, when they canceled the show, uh, a, a cameraman came up to me and he said, you know something, Alex, you're not bad for talent. <laughs> Uh, you know, and and I took that as a real compliment yeah. because well, I'm sure they meet some absolute nightmares. Well, they hate talent; they really do hate talent because talent is like you know, talent is the performing chimp, and the talent doesn't realize that. Talent thinks they're a star or something. Like that, but they're really, and I, I'm telling you this when I do tell when I did television, I had less control over my final product than at any other time in my life. Because I would write the piece, there I've got control. I would do the piece, I've got control. But I didn't shoot it, I didn't do the sound, and I'm not going to go into the editing bay and edit it. So I, I'm relying on a whole line of people to, uh, to make me look good. And if I treat them like shit, forget it, you know. Um, so I always learn to treat my crew really well. You know, when it was Christmas time, I had good gifts for everybody. I even, uh, Live 105 never gave out bonuses to their people. Every year I would give a bonus out to my crew. Yeah, I remember that. You were very generous. I'm like, God, yeah, the radio station was so cheap. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I gave everybody a bonus depending upon what their job was, you know. Mm -hmm. My producer would probably usually get the largest amount. I didn't have to give. Uh, I think I even gave Lori a, 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 you know, who's my newswoman and on the air, but she was making really good money, so it didn't didn't matter that I whether I gave her a bonus or not. But yeah, you gave us. Uh, you would give us stuff, right? I remember you give it after the uh, after the New Year's show. We'd go over to your house, and maybe you gave us bonuses that night. I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you gotta you gotta treat your crew right. If you don't treat your crew right. Man, they'll eat you alive. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, I mean, I, there's some people that you can't buy their loyalty at all, but, you know, that that's another thing altogether. But the, the reason I guess crews hate talent is because talent is usually very, like, as I say, they're, they're like prima donnas. Yeah, sure. uh, There was one woman there who was Asian who did the news, uh, and she would go out and do stories occasionally. And they used to refer to her, my crew, as the dragon lady <laughs> because she was such a bitch. She was sh such a cunt mm -hmm. that they just they hated her. And they, whenever she fucked up, they wouldn't tell her. You know? Good. You know? They just went out and shot it. You know? Hey, the light's wrong on her. Fuck that. Let's shoot her. You know? Makes her look evil. Good. <laughs> That's what she is. I can't remember what her name was now. She's not that working anymore as far as I know. But uh, Yeah, they called her the dragon lady. Yeah. yeah. The television gives you the least amount of control over your final product. Radio has the ultimate control. In fact, if you're, let's say you're a guy doing your show at, one o'clock in the morning and you're sitting in a studio all alone the only person you have to worry about is you you know yeah, you, so you have more control in radio than you do in almost any other medium i mean even in i guess working for a newspaper or writing you have to deal with editors sure you yeah. know so i often felt that i liked radio best because i had control over the final product that's a great medium. Too bad they destroyed it. Oh yeah, no. It, it, I always called it the most visual medium in in in, uh, in the business uh, because people you had to create an image in people's minds using sound. Uh, and um, uh, I, and I grew up with that belief because I grew up on old time radio, and I would listen to all these shows. You know, uh, the, 
the kids' shows like Sky King or Jack Benny or something like that, and all uh, you sat there by your radio and you created images in your mind of what these people looked like, you know, what, what the situation was, and they made it visual. And that's where I got my sense of broadcasting. And that's the thing I guess that most people who I work for were like managers and program directors didn't understand that that my formative years in radio was listening to it uh, and it was old time radio. And so all the all the techniques I used were like old time radio. If you ever noticed with the radio show, I was always doing imagery. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, and and people had to, you know. I'll tell you the biggest disappointment I used to get is when I would uh, see somebody either in the newspaper or maybe I saw them in a personal appearance or something who was on the radio, and then I would look at them, say in the picture in the newspaper, and say. He doesn't look like he sounds, you know, big, rich voice, played a hero on radio and whatever, and all of a sudden you see a picture of him, he's a big, fat slob, <laughs> you know. And you, Some you, big you, disappointment. It's hard to put the two together. Ultimate, uh, ultimate disappointment but was... But people in radio were, uh, they must have been like big big not like tv stars but they must have had huge following oh yeah yeah days. i mean i mean you knew what jack benny looked like you knew what fred allen looked like because these people also appeared in movies but you know when you'd hear somebody listen to a show like sky king or captain midnight and you'd hear the the star of the show and then you see a picture of him you go i don't even understand how that voice comes out of that guy yeah uh, but if he if he suddenly was on television and started talking you go, oh yeah now i understand how that voice comes out of that person but the biggest disappointment I ever had was my mother took me to New York to see her parents. And um, I remember that one, too. That was like a five-day train trip across the country. Mm -hmm. um, where I remember the most wonderful thing was lying in the Pullman car, sleeping, and waking up in the morning and raising the shade, and we're going through the Rockies. And you're lying in bed as the Rockies are going by. You know, that but anyway, great. Anyway, she took me to New York, and my favorite radio show in those days. Uh, you know, and I was a little kid, so please excuse me for my childishness and my broadcasting taste. Uh, but uh, I did. Uh, uh, I, I love the show called Let's Pretend. Um, in fact, I even remember the theme song. Cream of wheat is so good to eat, and we eat it every day. And anyway, so they, then they would say, let's pretend. And then each week they would do a fairy tale. They would take a fairy tale that existed and, and act it out. And I love that show. So she, as a surprise to me, got us tickets to go see Let's Pretend. And that was so disappointing to me, I can't tell you. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, it's a bunch of people standing up in front of microphones reading, and some guy over in the corner making sound effects, and that none of these people looked <laughs> like they sounded. And, it, and I couldn't follow it because it, you know, I, was, I was getting all this visual information coming in at the same time the audio was going out, and they weren't doing it for me. They were doing it for a radio audience. They weren't doing it for the audience in the studio. And I was really disappointed. But I guess it was one of my great lessons in radio. That radio yeah. radio is a business of audio imagery. And that that's how you do it. And so when I came to radio in a day when no longer that kind of radio existed, what did I bring with me? I brought the studio audience, right? Brilliant. Y you know? And, and, and everything was, a lot of it was imagery. And um, so that's how I worked it. Am I talking too much? No, I love this. And what? So what? Were people in radio making like a ton of money then? Like they, uh, the I guess for those days, I mean, it depend. Nah, they they made okay, They did okay. Uh, they didn't make big money. The actors. So um, maybe people like Jack Benny. Were, but Jack but not. Benny made big money, and uh, you know Fred Allen because these people were also in the movies and they had other venues, right? Um, so they had to make it worth their while. 
but uh, uh, the, I, I don't know. I think some of like the actors and so on, they, they made a decent amount of money. I think there was the union then, and there were union prices they paid. But you had a guy like Orson Welles, okay, who while he was working in New York doing plays and things like that, was also the most requested radio actor. So he would go back and forth between this job playing this character and then over here to do this character. In fact, he was the first voice of the shadow. Uh, and, and he would go from place to place. And it was so daunting that he hired an ambulance to take him from one place to another so if he had to get there in time, they could turn on the sirens. <laughs> really? And he could get to the next job. So he was doing right. five, six jobs a day. He was announcing here. He was playing the shadow there. He was doing an acting. He was doing the Mercury Theater here, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, one of the most requested voices in broadcasting. So I imagine he did okay. But he did okay by doing volume. <laughs> yeah. That's a great story, the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and and I mean uh, that uh, radio was a. Re I, I was raised on radio, but not the radio everybody knows. I mean, the radio that after 1950, uh, with the advent of television, uh, that kind of radio disappeared. Uh, initially, all the television shows were actually visualizations of the of radio shows. Yeah, shows like Guiding Light and so on that were soap operas were also soap op were soap started as soap operas on radio, and uh, eventually television started producing stuff that was original. But for the longest time, they were trying to take what they had done on radio and move it to television. Jack Benny moved to television. Fred Allen, I think, tried to move to television. He wasn't very successful at it. Uh, Benny was extremely successful in television. In fact, I don't think there's a better job of taking what the radio show was and translating it to television in those days because there were a lot of shows that were just terrible, just terrible uh, television shows because they tried to be a TV show of that, of that. Gunsmoke was a radio show before it was ever a TV show. Wow. Yeah. Ran forever. Yeah. Robert Con William Conrad. You remember this big fat guy, William Conrad, the actor? Cannon. Cannon. He was Matt Dillon on radio. <laughs> really? See, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, you, yeah, that, that's not you know, a good visual. So if you saw a picture of the guy who played Matt Dillon on radio, you go, how does that voice come out of that guy? <laughs> you know? So oh, man, uh, you were saying how like, the... Uh the studios were so opulent back then for the radio. Oh, the studios. Um, the one in San Francisco that I remember is the one my father played in. And then in later years, I went and sat in that room to try and communicate with the ghost of my dead father. Uh, was it uh, Mason and O'Farrell? There's that beautiful building, and it, it was NBC and ABC. Uh, but it was originally open when it, when NBC owned what became ABC, which was, I think it was the Red and Blue Network, okay? And they opened that thing up just before, I think just as the war was starting, or maybe during the Depression. I'm trying to remember. I think it was, maybe it was the Depression. Yeah. But in any event, that building was called Radio City San Francisco. Wow. And it had a Studio A was a studio audience studio, and it's huge. And uh, they, people would come in, they would sit there, and there was a stage there, and they would uh, do radio programs from there. And on the bottom, you had your control room, and if you looked up, because it was about two stories high, there was the what they called the sponsor's box, where the sponsors could come and watch the program being done. And all of that was still there, when I was doing uh, my Alex Bennett Comedy Hour shows back in, uh, when was that, uh, uh, maybe late 1980s or something like that, and it was still there. And at one point when I was working for uh, Play Incorporated, we were looking to maybe buy that building 
or at least rent it out and and use it as a studio and so on. And we were gonna we were gonna actually try and do a national live radio broadcast out of there every night, and the rest of the time turn that studio into kind of a nightclub and call it Studio A at Radio City. But we never we it never came to pass. We didn't, the deal fell apart. That would have been great. Yeah. But, I mean, it was a beautiful studio. And then they had, like, ten other studios in that building. Uh, and later it just became KBHK-TV Channel 44, Cable 12 on most systems. Uh, and uh, that, that was, you know, so, I mean, it, 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 they, they didn't fuck around with radio in those days. It was a, it was a big medium. And you go to, you know, Radio City in New York and... Uh, that whole NBC building, that whole RCA building, it was Radio City. Was that, 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 That's why it's called the Radio City Music Hall. Exactly. It's, uh, God, it's so sad it's over. Right. And then at Sunset and Vine, there was Radio City out in Los Angeles, which is far more important. Most people don't remember. I have somewhere in my thing, in my, uh, in my locker, my storage locker, I think I still have a folio that I was given because they found a whole bunch of them when somebody took it over uh, of these folios that were the introduction folio for the opening of Radio City San Francisco and it had the plans for the building and it had people you know doing radio programs and they showed they had a chef there and a kitchen and they had a mm. picture of the chef you know giving it the okay sign you know <laughs> like I'm, I'm cooking with the, here, hat, with the hat with the hat yet yeah, and the whole thing <laughs> and and it is the folio for the opening of Radio City San Francisco. So, so I hope I hope I haven't lost that. Um, we moved most of the boxes of everything over, uh, but we we didn't. Uh, you know, there's some things that I hope didn't fall by, through the cracks because that sounds that, like you got a treasure trove in storage. Yeah, I would love to go there and just de- delve into my treasure trove. I you know. But don't ever get yourself a storage locker. That's my advice to any human being on the face of the planet. Don't get a storage locker because you'll never empty it out. You know, mm. I, I I put all stuff in the storage locker, left it there saying I'll be back in San Francisco soon. Then I can get it out. I came here, got a job, stayed here. Now 17 years later, and uh, not 17 years, uh, about 14, 15, maybe 14 years later, and uh, I still have that same storage locker whose price had gone from, I think, 120 a month to 365. Uh, and you just never go and get this stuff out. That's what they count on. If you want to invest yeah. in anything, invest, invest in a reason. storage place, a storage facility. Make I'd love to go through all those tapes and everything you got. Well, I have a friend who's sending a lot of them to me. Uh, the, I have a guy who owns a storage facility, and he said, you're paying too much for that. And he literally, thank God, his name is Damien Chaplin, and I have to thank him, moved everything out of my storage locker except for the furniture. We left the furniture behind. And um, he put it in his storage facility and is saving me two hundred dollars a month, you know. And so all that stuff is put away, but it's a question of, you know, going through it and getting stuff out. Occasionally he sends me stuff. Occasionally he'll send me something and go, "See, remember this?" <laughs> and I go, "Wow," <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, he's uh, he's the he's the uh, what can you, the uh, archivist for my lot for my locker. Mm-hmm. So, but don't don't ever get a, a storage locker. Leave it at a friend's place. Something you know, because you'll never go back to get it, especially if you're moving out of town. And that's most of the reasons why you get a storage locker. Here you get one because people don't have room to put stuff. Here I've got this huge apartment house, apartment building, or apartment that I live in, so I can I can store a lot of stuff. Although who knows what we're going to do with all the stuff in here if we ever have to move out. So. Uh, it, it's 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 quite something. And do you have a storage locker? No, I'm such a minimalist. I got everything I own is in like a big cardboard box. 
on that one too. <laughs> you can still I put do. it in the back seat of your car, huh? It's in the, it's actually, I do have a closet here. So. <laughs> well, I often said, and we got to get going here, but I often said that it, life is like a giant snowball going downhill. And as you go down that hill, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I remember when I traveled from California to Texas to go to work, everything I owned was in the back seat of the car and in the trunk. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It takes two vans now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, let's do this again next week. You okay? got it. Ladies and gentlemen, they ever popular and lovely and terrific and lets me talk my head off. Larry. Uh, my only friend, Alex Bennett. <laughs> my only friend, Larry Bubbles Brown, except for Shecky. Shecky's my other friend. Okay. And uh, thank you. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, let me just get my picture on here. Uh, what button do I push? There we go. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I'm, I just don't do things as well as I used to. I'm not as adept at this uh, whole procedure as I used to be, and that's why uh, I am so fucked up and uh, I'm slightly going crazy. But in any event, um, I have nothing to talk about. Um, I do have one thing I want to show you, though, uh, and uh, this is uh, this is a piece of footage. Uh, you know, today is the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of the death of Princess Diana. Uh, and uh, I went on vacation. I, 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 no, I didn't go on vacation. Well, I, I went on a vacation, but I had been let go at, uh, uh, at Live 105 in San Francisco. And I decided that uh, I should take a nice trip somewhere. And I, took, I was going to take my girlfriend at the time, who you've heard on, here on this show lately, uh, Kathleen, uh, who we refer, refer to affectionately as Schmoody, and uh, we decided to uh, start our vacation in Paris, and then we drove down, you know, through Italy and, uh, and uh, to the uh, French Riviera, and then down into uh, Barcelona, and ultimately a plane to Ibiza, and that was a really, it was like a three-week vacation, and it was a vacation because I didn't have a job anymore, but I still was swimming in dough because they were still paying me a lot of money at this station not to work, which shows you how wonderful I am. People are willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year so you just don't come around, all right? But anyway, so our first stop was, uh, was Paris. And unfortunately, something had happened in Paris about, this is the 6th of August. Of uh, 6th of September, excuse me, 1997. Uh, and um, the, the thing that happened there uh, that, uh, that was outstanding is that <clears throat> we got there, what, six days after she died in uh, that tunnel uh, in Paris, uh, being chased by the paparazzi, and then there was an accident, and uh, Diana died. Uh, and we were we um, got there at the time that uh, at the same time that in London the funeral was taking place for Princess Di. So there was about there was about only about six days between the time she died and the time they buried her. And uh, we were uh, we we were in Paris. And um, I want you to see a little bit of footage here because it, it's my remember my only remembrance of uh, Diana. And uh, the face you will see talking, and then I'm going to turn, turn the sound down a little bit because I really don't want to play the music that's on the track because it's taken out of a whole vacation dock that I turned out of my trip uh, with her. Uh, and uh, this is Paris, uh, September 6, 1997. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm just reading the sign. This is so cool. I can't believe it. We're in Paris. <laughs> I don't even know if that music is still in copyright, but you know. Why did they build that? What? Why did Eric Eiffel build that? It wasn't Eric. Yeah, it is. It was Gustav. Yeah. Well, there's something across the street you should see. Okay. Now look at this. 
this this is these were all these people uh, and and I noticed what was happening there were these people out there and they were uh, going around and uh, uh, circling that uh, that uh, that is actually the torch that was a model of the one in the Statue of Liberty and it's on this overpass and it's the overpass where Diana died and this is the makeshift memorial that they put together for Diana look at that and uh, uh, little notes to her I mean it just an out, this is in France that you're having an outpouring of, of this kind of affection uh, and then that is that's the tunnel that's where she died so anyway that I just I found that footage and I wanted you to see it and I wanted to share it with you and I thought that that would be a, 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 a fine tribute to uh, Princess Di, who was a heck of a broad, all right? I hate to put it that way, but she was a heck of a broad. Anyway, I'm going to turn on the, um, on, on the Skype, and uh, that means that people can then call me. We use Skype for people to call this program, mainly because the, it, we started out doing it because the audio... Uh, on Skype was so ridiculously wonderful and clean and uh, then we found out we could also do uh, video so we did a video version and then Facebook Live came along and we started doing everything uh, with our uh, um, uh, with with uh, with uh, video so we Skype is very important to us and if you don't know how to get Skype go over to gabnet.net the whole Kit and Caboodle is over at that uh, <clears throat> that place, and um, uh, you'll be able to find out how to get Skype and uh, the phone number you can use to call us here at the program. And um, our uh, our Skype number is GabNet Live, and our God, I always forget it. Our phone number, I I can't even remember it. I'm you know I I, I pay for it every month and I can't remember it. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, again, here we go. It's three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. That's if you want to use a phone. We prefer though that you don't use a phone. You know that you use the uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, the Gabnet Live, which is the ID that you call to get us on Skype. Okay. So anyway, that's uh, that's that's all that. And nobody's calling me tonight. Well. Uh, you know, it, it, believe me, uh, you know, it took everything I had to be here tonight, so I'd like to hear from you. Uh, maybe they're mad at me because I wasn't on last night because I didn't do a show. But I didn't do a show because I was in no shape to do a show. And uh, and if you were planning on uh, putting up with this show and, and dealing with this show, um, I'm sorry that uh, I, uh, I wasn't... Uh, that I wasn't here. Well, Phil Meyer's calling. I can see that he's coming online, so at least we'll have one caller. Uh, um, yeah, and you know, I mean, it, this is a part. This is par for the course. It's a little, little on the slow side, folks. A little on the slow side. Uh, let me see here. Here's Phil. There we go. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, Alex. How you? There doing? he is. I gotta, I gotta do a little bit of adjusting on the citizen panel panel here there we go see i got it yeah there we go frame it more let me call i heard your uh, first 10 minutes of yesterday's show yeah and uh i was a little worried about you mm -hmm. um, well thank you i, I appreciate it i appreciate it yeah i appreciate it you know but uh uh, I'm, I've been going nuts is what's happening. So I'm, going, I, I'm literally having a uh, major nervous breakdown, so we've got to get me off to a shrink or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it's like all guys when equipment doesn't run right, whether it's the car, and I know you don't have to deal with that anymore, but computers or cameras or something no, no, like no, that. No, 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 it wasn't just that. It was everything. I mean, it was oh, just yeah. everything. Uh, uh, it, 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 uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 I guess the thing that just absolutely threw, you know, all the stuff I went through with the cable company. And so I went and got sure. Fios and I figured, well, what's going to be the problem with them? Well, uh, the Fios works okay. You know, I mean, I've got the fastest bandwidth I've ever had in my life. 
you know, the it, truth, your signal's super clean. It, really? Uh, your, your audio is the best I've heard. Yeah, uh, well, it's going out there at a very high high rate of, of speed. Um, but I'm glad to hear that. That that helps. You know, mm -hmm. as a cable company, as a you know, with TV, eh, it's okay. You know, the picture is much better, much cleaner than the cables. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, thing I don't like about it is they, they don't have some of the same features, you know, like um, um, if I want, uh, what was it, if I want to record something, I can't remember now, but there are a whole bunch of things in the recording part of it that I don't like. And uh, the channels are all in a different place, and they decided they, uh. wanted, they decided they wanted to still have a low-definition channel for the local channels and a high-definition channel. And so you have a thing where you go, you hit channel 2, and it hits 2, and then it goes to 502, right? Uh, and, no, and my feeling is, fuck you who don't have high-definition anymore. <laughs> okay, there isn't a human being on the planet who doesn't have high do. – anybody here still have one of those low-definition TV sets? I have an HD, but it's not uh, 4K. Yeah, I have one 4K here, and I must say they're splendid. But I can't, I can't um, um, give myself a good reason to buy another TV set. I've got too many already as it is. Oh, that when you looking at it, the old uh, just 1080p compared to the 4K, you look at it and go, "Wow." I, well, I'll tell yeah, you, yeah, different. but I'll tell you, I, I the, the, the 1080p is pretty good. You know, yeah, I, it, I, I have a couple of sets here that are really good. And down and, to 720 is really make a big difference. Oh, well, when yeah. you get down to 720, those old 720 yeah. sets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and when you watch the 420 on porno on RedTube, that's really good. Yeah, well, that, that you know. It's like uh, chess. Well, no, but, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, what do you know? The, uh, uh, my, my, what do you call it? Hold on a second. I got to get these people on my, my, it, it. it uh, it, it, my uh, what do you call it? my OBS studio tonight decided to crap out. Let's see what it did to the to the signal tonight. Um, yeah, uh, well, it's, uh, we're still going, so I think it just it just keeps sending out a signal or something. Hello, Patrick. And uh, let's see, Brian's in a car. That's what, why you see some lights going by on that uh, upper right hand square. It's pretty dark. Yeah. Uh, you know, talking about your OBS, yeah. uh, I bought XSplit, and I tried to install, and it kept telling me that it wouldn't work with uh, 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 the uh, Apple uh, thing, what, what's it, Safari. So I wrote them, and they said, oh, we'll try using Chrome. Well, I used Chrome, and it still couldn't get it to, uh, to download. And, to download uh, what? Uh, to my Mac Mini. Uh, so the so I wrote him back and I and I said you know it's it's not working on Chrome. I said is this meant to let, let, let's work? tell people what this is all about. OBS is a thing I use. It's called OBS Studio, and mm -hmm. it's a, it's a free uh, program that is really quite superior to almost any other uh, switching program. I mean all the all the stuff you see with the with me in the lower corner, which I've got to make it a little smaller because we're cutting off. Uh, the nose of uh, of, uh, of Patrick. Uh, yeah, well, if he'd move his chair over uh, a little, uh, huh? you know. <laughs> if he move his chair over a little. Yeah, uh, then you could leave the, your square the same size. Oh, I see. Hold on a second. Him and that damn chair, you know. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see here. There it's we always go. Pushing. There we go. It's see now. Pushing. Now I'll get out of his way. There we go. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait a minute. I've got a problem here, oh. though. I've got. I, I see what happened was the other night when some when people call the program and they um, there are too many of them it causes a problem for me you know uh, and I I don't like that problem and uh, it, uh, it causes I see John Rockwell on the uh, Facebook but not on the Skype you see him on Facebook but not on Skype I see okay. <laughs> Oh, hold on a second. I gotta. I'm trying to. I'm trying to frame the picture just right, so that you don't see a whole bunch oh, of gazorchness. The, the whole story about XSplit is it doesn't work on a Mac. Well, anyway, explain what XSplit is. It's like what I'm using here. Yeah, um, it's for chroma key. Well, no, uh, it's not for chroma key. It's for really for switching. Chroma key is one of the f small thing. You know, you are so set on chroma key. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying. You know, it didn't work. 
and and I couldn't I couldn't make it work. And then they finally told me, oh, it doesn't it doesn't work on a Mac. It only works on a Windows machine. Yeah. So they gave me my two hundred bucks back. Well, I do the show on a Windows machine, so I'll go get a green screen and back them in. I'll I'll we have OBS has chroma key chroma key, right. and I'll do chroma key, and then you'll be pissed off at me. No, I I just have to download OBS. Yeah, well, that's free. That's no big problem. It's it's a multi-platform uh, program. Well, you have that gal that calls in who has the green screen and it's working, and she was using XSplit. Well, but, she probably uh, has a PC. You're right, exactly. Uh, that's uh, That was my... Um, uh, God, I, I, could, I hate yeah. you Mac people. Uh, <laughs> you know something... Not to not to be confused with IBS, which shits all over you. Yeah, face. yeah. Well, I use a thing called I I O B S, which is uh, you know, irritable open source <laughs> broadcast uh, software. You know, I, I was in uh, this. Uh, a friend of mine lived in Marina del Rey, and I was down there visiting. And there was a guy with a beautiful Corvette, and his license plate was I O D O, you know, D O E. So you know, he owes money. Yeah, I thought uh, it was a pretty good license. John Rockwell but. says, I'm not on Skype at the moment, watching your Facebook feed. Oh, oh, okay. I see. He wrote something. And, uh, yeah, and uh, you sweep it, and then you don't see what people have written. Oh. I see. That That's what it was. Yeah. I see. Okay, whatever. I just look back here for reference to make sure it's all working. And then when it doesn't work, I get all upset. And, you know, uh, I know. I'm slowly going crazy. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Science. How you doing? Apparently better than you. Turn off that good or bad, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, 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 I was talking to my ex-wife today because we're trying to find this time that we can get together and do a Skype call so you guys can meet her and hear her story, which is interesting, okay, to say the least. But, uh, you know, she had pancreatic cancer, or has it, or had it. And she had this massive operation called, uh, uh, don't, Mike, don't move your microphone like that. It's annoying. Sorry. Yeah, well, sorry, don't cut it. Just don't do it. Be careful. Because you have a very annoying mic. It makes a lot of, it makes noise, and it, uh, it's tinny, you know. And so if you're going to use it, then, you know, and also show us a picture of yourself. That would be nice, too. Anyway, where was I? Oh, you were talking so, about your ex. Yeah. yeah. So, so she, she, had, uh, she, had, she had pancreatic cancer. I say had because they had this operation, and it's, I can't remember what they call it. It's a, uh, but it, it's a, a special operation that they do only on about 10% of people <clears throat> because most people who have prostate, uh, rather uh, pancreatic cancer are doomed. Okay, so they just don't do anything. But they found that she had a good chance of getting most of the cancer, and they did, although some of the um, lymph nodes around it had signs of cancer, and so now she's going to have to go through chemo, all right? But anyway, uh, we're talking all about the stuff she's going through, and she's really a real trooper about it. She says, I just can't get serious about this thing. I'm just laughing all the time about it. And I said, that's the way you laugh. Laugh at this kind of thing in its face. And then I, she says, and how are you? And I told her a little bit of my troubles. And finally I said, you know, I just realized it. The cable companies are worse than cancer. <laughs> And she laughed and said, you know something? That's probably true. Well, I, uh, I had my phone scan. What? I got the uh, results back. Oh, from, yeah? Uh, yeah. So no cancer has spread into the bones. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, 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 they were, bravo. They did that, I'm sure, because they wanted to make sure, not because they thought it did. I asked uh, for it. That's, oh, you asked for it. Okay. Yeah. And, I uh, just wanted to. I just want to close you on that anecdote, Alex. How are, how are uh, cable companies worse than cancer? Because they can kill you. Anyway, I'll, I'll, if you haven't been listening to the show lately, then you don't understand the full depth of the story of what I've gone through with these people. But everybody here did, so they kind of laughed. Can, can you uh, give us a little synopsis of oh. what uh, Fios oh. did to you? No, oh, uh, what Fios did to me? Yeah. Oh. 
So everything's put in, right? Right. And I have network drives here that I have video on, like movies and TV shows and things like that, that I collect. And then I can then watch them in any room I want to. Uh, they put in this new system, and two of my drives w aren't read by the system. Two, my two oldest network drives are, but the one that isn't, the two that aren't are the newest ones and the most expensive ones. And there, it, what happens is when you have a router for uh, Wi-Fi and whatever, you have four plugs in the back, and those are Ethernet plugs. And anything you plug in there either gets a feed from it or it can get a feed to it. And that's what puts these drives online. There's not a router I've had that doesn't seamlessly take these these uh, these things. So they're going to send somebody out next week from uh, the biggest technician they've got who's going to figure out why I'm not getting these drives aren't being recognized. But How much they, does he weigh? They, uh, luckily, I moved all that stuff, a lot of that stuff over onto other drives as a safety. But mm -hmm. otherwise, there's no way I can access those drives unless I can get them onto a network. Mm. You know, so it's really, it, it, uh, who knows? But, I mean, I've got the best modem they make. This is the, I have a, almost a gigabyte up and a gigabyte down. Right. And I got to tell you, that's a fast motherfucker because last night, in spite of all my being crazed, uh, I managed to post uh, two of the shows here, The Intersection and The Exchange. And when I post them, uh, well, The Exchange is only a 30-minute show. Uh, that took, are you ready for this? Four seconds to upload. Mm. Wow. And, 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 and an hour show, which was uh, Jack's, I think took something like seven seconds. How Let long did it zip. take on the previous system? Uh, about uh, it depended. Sometimes it was slow. Sometimes it was fast. But if it was really slow, it could take ten minutes. If it was fast, it would do it in about a minute, minute and a half. That's still a lot faster. Oh yeah, I had three hundred at that point. But this is like you know, this is like makes your nose bleed. It's so fast. Uh -huh. So, so that's that's good though. Huh? Oh, no, it's terrific, but it doesn't pass my fucking signal from my... And plus, it's got all this other garbage. I See, what they do is they show up as, uh, uh, this is this is this drive, and this is this drive, and this is this drive, and, you know. And now, there are a whole bunch of things, about five of them, that, that uh, it says media server, and I found out what it was when the guy came by to look at it today and say, well, I'll have the, the big guy come out on Tuesday... They're the five, uh, what do you call it, um, boxes five, I have. 200. Yeah, they're, each of those boxes has its own media server so that you can be read in all the other rooms. Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the line, that was working before he installed all the, uh, all the boxes. Once he installed the boxes, all of a sudden those things appeared and two of, uh, th actually three of my boxes disappeared. So there's a conflict. You got one box that's doing it, and then you got the other box that's also yeah, doing it. Yeah, but why? It. Why is it that my older network drives are perfect? No problem, no problem at all. So yeah. can they turn off the uh, the the media? Well, thing? we'll uh, we'll also, see. We'll wait till the genius comes out here. They say this is the best guy they got, and if he can't fix it, nobody can. But what am I going to do? I canceled Spectrum. We pulled all the you know the infrastructure of the wiring out of here i can't go back i got a two-year contract with these people so i got to live with it but if you say you the sound days. if you say the show sounds but no i don't no 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 it, usually you get 30 days uh, to tell them this is no good <clears throat> well yeah then what do i do i gotta go limping back to spectrum who's they don't care but it, uh, uh, and then i won't have my whole house dvr which at least i have now yeah but i may have to get a new dvr that's bigger the one they've got is got 50 gigs, and I want one that has 200. So, may have to do that. But yeah, uh, uh, you know, do you think that uh, the network, uh, uh, the box that you're using, maybe isn't compatible, and it's not the drives, it's the no, it's the box. Look, it's a router. A router has a singular function. Okay, mm -hmm. and if every other router I've ever had from every other cable company has been able to allow me to network within the house. There's no reason why this one shouldn't. 
you yeah. know. And, and it had probably had something to do with when all the other media servers went online. There's something that's not, but maybe he can do something about that. Maybe he can go, he, he probably can go into this box and change things I could never, I could never change. Right. You know. Yeah, uh, um, obviously there's a conflict, and that's probably why it's not seeing. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, but, but after all of this, you know, after all I went through for the last couple of weeks, uh, this was the, you know, this was the frosting on the cake. This, I just, it just threw me off the de off a deep end, off, off, off an edge where I still am, but I'm just hiding it really well, you know. Um, but it's just like yeah, there's a point at which you say, hey, the world's out to get me, so I may as well just let it roll over me. Yeah. You know? And um, uh, the world wants to fuck you up the yeah, ass. Yeah. The world wants to fuck you up the ass. You know this for yeah. sure. You just turn around, pull your pants on, and say, here it is, motherfucker. Take your best shot. By the way, I, I have, well, you know what's interesting about this? <laughs> I have fiber. I, uh, let me see if I, uh, well, I, I, I don't want to take the cameras off and, and show it, but, uh, uh, well, wait a minute, well, maybe I can't. I, I can't show you guys, but I can show the audience. Let me go to my, my I can see it on the other thing. My camera, maybe if, you, if, you're, wa if you're watching the show somewhere. Uh, let me see here. Let me, let me take this. See this? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, uh. See this down here? Wait a minute. If I can... There's a there's a box right right over here. I don't know if you can see it. I can't I can't seem to get the, uh, uh, camera, the far, camera yeah. far enough over there. Uh, yeah, is that that bl uh, black and silver one? Uh, uh, no, it's all black. Oh, those are speakers. It's all black. Okay. Anyway, it, oh oh, and there's my there's my board, folks. Huh? In case you are interested. Okay, let me just uh, put this back up like that. Uh, no, but anyway, th that box, which is just, you know, uh, right here, mm -hmm. the, 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 the line going into that box is fiber. Wow, so they actually so, brought fiber into the, into the apartment. Yeah, oh yeah, they, uh, yeah, to a box, which they put, That's your modem, put right? right behind here. No, it's not the modem. That's not the router. What comes out of there is regular coax that goes to the router. I see. See, but up to that point, it's it's pure fiber. Nice. I'm getting my uh, fiber. The, your audio is is cleaner. Has can everybody else uh, tell that? Yeah. 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 Is it, it really? Is. Yeah. It's a lot cleaner. A lot cleaner audio. Even the picture looks a lot cleaner. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm Picture's good. okay. Uh, I, I don't see a market improvement, but uh, as far as the uh, the audio, it's uh, actually on Facebook. The the the, fic, the picture is clearer. So maybe it's the camera you're using on Skype. Yeah. What, what was that noise that appeared there? Yeah. Well, that's just by you know I'm a, I'm living a life here where uh, everything fucks up. So let me see here. Where are we? Okay. I want to get back to here. Okay. So I can see that. Anyway. So. Um, Tell me, guys, anything, uh, anything new in your lives that you, that will cheer me up? Like maybe that your life is more miserable than mine. Hey, what? I got Medicare today. <laughs> Did you, 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 not, you, you now have Medicare? I guess. Really? I got it in the mail. Really? So you're Sixty-five, huh? No, I'm sixty. Just turned sixty. Oh, it's uh, because of disability. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know. i got to call and find out. I thought I had to wait till I was 62. No, uh, I have a friend that was 58, and he had a disability, and uh, they gave him uh, Medicare because he was yeah. collecting disability. I've been on it for about a year and a half, I guess, so maybe it's, I don't know. i got to find out. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, that was one of my big freakouts when I, you know, got laid off was how was I going to pay for my medical stuff and mm -hmm. my wife luckily went to full time and she got insurance and now they send me this so I don't I don't even know how it works if I got insurance. Well, are you are you 65? No, I just turned 60 last month. Okay, but can you get Medicare at your at your age? Uh apparently <laughs> they sent me the card. Well, apparently because of because of the disability. Really? Well, uh, Trump is doing 
things for people that weren't getting oh, those oh, benefits shit. before. <laughs> oh, here we go. You made a phone call, right, Phil? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, between the million dollars that he donated to the people in Texas today, and he got and the money he took away from the uh, from the uh, hurricane and relief funds to that, uh, that was from. I heard and it was and from he got you Medicare. Huh? I heard it was from the Clinton fund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I read a headline today that the Southern uh, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center uh, has got offshore accounts in the Cayman that their uh, their top officials get paid enormous amounts of money, and uh, they just they moved like 2.2 million dollars to an account in the Cayman Islands, uh, offshore accounts. Uh, and what what is what is that the po what, what Southern Poverty that? Law Center? Yeah. The Law Center is the one that came out with that map of uh, the hate groups. Yeah. Uh, yeah, was this from like a source called Trump'sAssKissers.com or what? Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely something. was. But uh, I mean, it was a headline. I, you know, so and I uh, started reading well, the article. You know, there there is always um, uh, complaints about these organizations at one time or another. They always say somebody's getting paid too much money. Yeah, I guess some people do get paid too much money. But the latest one that's happening is the Red Cross. Mm. They're going after the Red Cross like crazy uh, because of what they say are funds that are not going to the victims of Hurricane Marty, or what's the name of Harvey? Do you remember Elizabeth Dole when she was the head of the Red Cross? I think her salary was 800 and something thousand a year. And that was back when Reagan was president. Yeah, but if she if she is a good if she is a good head of the organization and she makes the money and she brings in the the bucks, then she's worth it. Well, eight hundred grand a year in the late seventies was a lot of money. Yeah, but anyway, the point I'm the money. point I'm making is is that uh, they're yelling about the Red Cross and the fact that the Red Cross that the, the, a lot of the funds don't get to the very thing that you gave money to. What I had heard years ago was that what happened was, let's say there was a San Francisco earthquake. And I got to tell you, the Red Cross was there. They came to my neighborhood. They had water and they had blankets and they had shelter and everything for people. All right? They were there faster than FEMA got there or anybody else from the government got there. And, I stopped uh, by your apartment that week and asked you if you needed me to move anything out. Yeah. At the truck. Yeah. And no, you I know. didn't need anything moved out. How many damage? Oh, well, I, mean, I, I was very lucky. Because, <laughs> yeah, you had a little crack in the wall. Well, like earthquakes are like a fi a fingers on a hand. You know, here, here, and here, and here is where you have the damage, and down here is where you don't have the damage. And it, it's, 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 it's a crapshoot. The apartment house next door to me, more damage than my apartment house. It's just, yeah. the, but anyway, um, the, the thing I found out about the Red Cross at that time was that if people gave money to the San Francisco earthquake thing and whatever, the money didn't necessarily go to San Francisco. What it went into was a big pot that takes care of every disaster that Red Cross has to go out after. So when you yeah. give the money now, well, maybe it's not going to somebody at, in, who was affected by Hurricane Harvey. But maybe is it Harvey? I think I'm right. It's Harvey. Yeah, it's yeah. Harvey. And now we got another one coming uh, to the. Uh, it's got to be a female's name. Yeah, Irma, uh, something like Hurricane that. Hurricane Cunt. <laughs> uh, you know, um, uh, but it, uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty good. You know, um, so I mean, I think I don't I don't blame them. Okay, and I don't blame the the problems uh, that they might have uh, as a result of that. Uh, and they say, oh, they were the 25 percent of the money goes to administration cost, and they say no wrong. Eight percent goes to administrative costs, and I see that as reasonable. But you know, you can't you can't expect people to to work for the Red Cross and not get uh, make a living. They got to give up doing another job to do this one. Yeah. So I understand yeah. that administration costs are going to be a, a bit of it, but don't complain about that. There's no other organization in this country that does as much, I think, as the Red Cross does. The Red Cross does training. 
yeah. uh, a, a basic life support. I, I took a one-week uh, course when I became the trainer at the police department for uh, uh, first responders and basic life support and first yeah. aid. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that was 60 hours. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't bother me, you know, yeah. at all uh, that these, uh, you know, these pe- that they... I know that the money might not go to people in Hurricane Harvey, okay? That it may then go to the next hurricane or some other disaster that happens. It goes into this giant pot, and then they use whatever they have to out of that pot. And you can imagine that during something like this, there's a lot of fundraising that goes on as a result. Yes, I I can barely see your hand, Brian. That's why I was so late at the party to get you on. Go ahead. Anyway, I was just going to say, I have to wonder, uh, because of the, the concerns about uh, the money you donate not being necessarily allocated to the uh, project that's being advertised to you, the disaster relief, in this case, Harvey, that's yeah. being advertised. I wonder if that's why uh, sites and uh, outfits like uh, GoFundMe and micro lending have been, have been implemented, become more popular. Well, the you know, uh, the recent use. Uh, GoFundMe charges what seven yeah. percent? So, yeah, I don't. I think in this case they're not charging anything. You know, they're well, doing it as my a my sister public is doing a GoFundMe for um, uh, to buy calculators for a deaf and, and blind school, and she's getting ninety calculators. And uh, so, and yeah, I it's a I wonder, it's a pretty good way of raising I, I think money. What I'm going to do for a GoFundMe is I'm going to I'm going to start a GoFundMe. I think I really should. Uh, you know. Uh, and it's so I can buy hookers. Go for it. You know, just go. It, go there's f- been some strange ah. ones. Go, go fund been some strange ones. Really? Have they had something like oh, that? Have. Oh yeah. Oh okay. No matter whether it gets funded or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I Mike. Got a, I got a question. Okay, if FEMA, what takes twenty four hours to activate during an emergency, yeah. takes them that long. Same with the Red Cross, am I correct, or am I wrong? Well, I don't know how long it takes the Red Cross. I really couldn't tell you. And I and FEMA, I think, is a lot longer than that, you know. Uh, and, you know, the people who, like in the New Orleans situation, still haven't seen their money from FEMA. You know, they still haven't gotten what they were due. Have you heard that, Jeff? Yeah, I, I think there's all kinds of problems with any of these organizations and particularly when the government has to do with uh, giving people money. Yeah. I talked to a friend today who theoretically lives in Houston. Uh, right now, he's in Dallas. How does he theoretically yeah. live in Houston? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, he was trying to retire. I mean, I, 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 I theoretically yeah. live in a state of denial, but go ahead. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's in bad, bad shape. No matter what he does, he's in trouble. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing they're talking about is their house, I think, was eight inches under the water. Yeah. So do you know that once the water goes away, all of that stuff could start to... Uh, oh no! Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, no, that, that uh, water. Wa- wa- it's only so eight. It, the water's it, there, spraying yeah. to prevent the mold. It was only eight inches, mind you. Only, I know. Only uh, eight. Well, oh, only eight inches. But, but, that's enough to just rot the whole bottom of your house. You uh, know, the, your uh, rugs well, are going. I deal with this every day because I, you know, do a lot of work for insurance companies that have water mitigation companies that go in yeah. when somebody has a flood in their house. Yeah. But some of these houses where it's submerged to the th- uh, to the second floor and up to the attic, those houses are total. Oh, losses. that's gone. That's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Total losses. You know, um, it, 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 those are to- totally gone. Listen, I've seen, fl- you know hurricane devastation because a few years ago I went down to New Orleans a couple of years after uh, the, the what was the name of that hurricane uh, Katrina, uh, Katrina. Katrina. Uh, after Katrina and I went to the I went to the poorest part of town which was I think they call it the ninth ward I may be ninth wrong ward, yeah. uh, 
and they had yet to really rebuild that neighborhood. I mean, and this was a few years later. The only houses there were these really weird modern houses that were put up by Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. Was it nine yeah. houses, I think? It, something like that, yeah. Yeah. But I've never, I was never able to totally figure, you know, I mean, I, it was, it was, they had not survived it. And I would love to go down there today. I bet it isn't rebuilt that much. Parts of Louisiana are going to get hit again by the, uh, by the, uh, by the, uh, uh, the storm yeah. uh, that the Harvey storm is, is going to come back to the shore and, uh, and it's already and, up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the trouble, the trouble with all of this is, is that, you know, Houston, I, I lived in Houston, and we were never in fear of hurricanes. Never. Um, I think Jack, if he were to call, I don't think we were ever in fear of hurricanes. We heard about them because they hit Galveston all the time, and they hit other towns along the coast. But, you know, Houston is in a bit. Houston didn't get, it wasn't that the winds were as bad as it was the rain was unrelenting. You know, and that's what caused the flooding. And as you said the other day, uh, Phil, and I didn't know this was true, but you're probably right. They they built a lot of property on wetlands and then gave the water no place to go. Exactly. And uh, that's why they're saying that part of Houston that they shouldn't rebuild on because they need to open that back up to wetlands. Yeah. And that, yeah. you know, I mean... Uh, so I mean, this was a town. They poured concrete over the wetlands. Is basically what went on. Yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Well, our genius vice president told everybody that we're going to rebuild everything the way it was. Again, but, but no, you don't want to do that. You, you can't. We don't want that. We want a different. You want to and figure out ecologically say, say, what's good. Here, yeah. you say, well, look, you know, you had your house there, but now you're going to have to put it here. Okay. That's when I asked, how's he going to do it? The power of prayer? Get the fuck out of here. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, the government will buy those properties that can't be rebuilt. Uh, and then they'll just have to decide whether they want to build somewhere else. Uh, yeah, you know. I really want, I, yeah, I really want Donald Trump rebuilding Houston. <laughs> I don't think, is there enough gold paint to do that? Yeah, but what if? Where is he going to put the wall? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know. So I mean, I, uh, I, you know, my heart goes out to the people in in uh, in uh, Houston. I used to live there. I uh, love the people in that town. Uh, it's a great Texas town, or it was a great Texas town. I think now it's not as twangy as it used to be. Yes, Mike. The same thing, like. Houston happened. Houston happens going on now in Florida. People are building on the wetlands in Florida. Right. You know, and it's starting to get sinkholes, more sinkholes than what it was worth. Yeah. And, and plus, they're getting more floods down there. And people, you know, don't realize, those, well, we can build here on the wetland. We never, they'll never flood again. Uh, I think again, Mother Nature has a weird way of playing, playing I'm going to be a bitch and I'm going to flood. Well, yeah, that what they're doing in Florida is they. Uh, yeah, I thought that I learned their lesson from Andrew. The you know the Everglades yeah, yeah. is where they're they're building, and they're, not only are they taking up habitat for that needs uh, for the you know for the um, animals that are there, and that's why all of a sudden you're getting alligators in Miami, kind of. You know, they're not coming that close. They're really in Opelika, but uh, you know, you, you, it's because they're and and you're right. I think that's one of the reasons the sinkholes, uh, but. Uh, Florida has only got a like a, their water table is only down five feet. They can't bury people underground. They have to bury them uh, above. Well, that ground. was the problem in New Orleans. Like, That's why they yeah. have why everybody's buried above ground in New Orleans is because you can't dig down six feet without hitting water. Right. You yeah, know. but, but in New Orleans is below sea level. Oh yeah. Whereas Miami is at sea. And level. yet it's interesting that that the main part of New Orleans. Bourbon Street, you know, the French Quarter, yeah, didn't get uh, didn't get destroyed at all. So is it that was it was like the Ninth Empire? Ward and a few and a lot of other areas. And then there was this. Uh, they built a a, a wall, uh, and it the couldn't ninth, it couldn't handle the pressure. The Ninth Ward was because uh, the Lake uh, what, Pontchartrain. 
Yeah. 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 The um, I believe what happened was it it gave way. The levee gave way and then yeah. flooded uh, the ninth ward, which was below sea level. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, it was a hundred year old levee. Uh, and it held that long, but they knew that it needed to be upgraded, and it never, never did. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, what the hell? You know, the same thing can happen to Sacramento. You know, 100-year uh, flood, quote unquote. But you know, that that would be a that would be a good thing. I was I was watching the news today though because now I have all the news channels on. Let's see, I started they started Channel 500. I've got this worked out. No, it's charge uh, Channel 600 is where all the news feeds are and uh, so i was going through them and most of them are finally getting off of the hurricane you know it was my enough from heaven for them for days because they didn't have to talk about donald trump at all well now uh, we got irma which is supposedly a cat five uh hurricane that's uh that's in the caribbean and uh i would probably make its way to florida now uh, the question is who names these hurricanes uh, the 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 center the uh, I know I, I know the weather center know, okay, but yeah. but somebody at the weather center must be the guy who gives the okay yes we'll call it Harvey or they, we'll, they, don't they they, uh, they name them way ahead of time and they're yeah, all they're all name. alphabetical and they're male and female male female yeah. male female yeah uh, so I'm Just thinking the female I thought we missed a good opportunity this year not naming one of them Donald <laughs> <laughs> thank God. I wonder if somebody did that. What would? Oh, did you hear? Now, this is a good one. So they're going to do a, a network telethon for Hurricane Harvey. I don't know why Hurricane Harvey needs a telethon. I think the people who were affected by it need a telethon, but they're doing it for Hurricane Harvey. Uh, and uh, they're trying to get all the you know, you know the usual suspects to come by, the stars to perform, and so on, and you know, get Beyonce and. This is black guy putting together who lives in Houston, who's getting the the national telethon together, and his thing is Donald Trump is not invited, <laughs> and he said he's not invited because I don't think that he is a good example of uh, of, of the way Americans should be. That it, it, his whole attitude about uh, uh, Charlottesville was racist. And he says, I don't want him there. He said, the only but way I will let him there is if he will bring one other ex-president with him. Uh, either No, he brings all the ex-presidents with him. Except if he brings Obama, then he can be on just with Obama. <laughs> how's he, how's he going to get Washington and Jefferson? You know, I, yeah, but all I'm saying is... <laughs> has he been tweeted yet? Yeah, uh, you know, Jeff. There's another uh, thing I read that. But you know, uh, it's pretty bad when they, when people don't want you to show up for a benefit. You know. Uh, uh, well, uh, it, hackers but... have hacked uh, 400 and something thousand uh, pacemakers. And uh, do you have a pacemaker? Yeah, it's, I sure uh, do. He sure does. Yeah. He, in fact, he has them. He has three or four of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me find it again. Uh, yeah, uh, they, oh, they, 465,000 pacemakers recalled due to hacking risk. Hacking? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Who's pacemaker was it? Uh, let me see. FDA is recalling half a million pacemakers. Does it have, have the name of them? Uh, I'm looking. Oh, uh, Abbott Laboratories, formula. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <have> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, oh, here's some others. Uh, what I, I'm uh, Versions of the following. U.S. Uh, Accent, S.R., Accent MRI, Assurity, Assurity MRI. When you get to his name, he's going to have a heart Anthem. attack. Uh, allure, uh, and Quadra Allure. Uh, what is yours, uh, Jeff? Just for I have a Boston. You have a what? Boston, Boston Scientific. Scientific. Yeah. Oh, Boston Scientific. Oh yeah, they're turning those off first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that wasn't mentioned. Okay, so. that's amazing. You know these hackers; they're they're everywhere now. You know now they're going after guys with. Well, bad how hearts. do you hack a, a, a pacemaker? Why is well? well, well, well wait, wait, didn't you say, uh, uh, Jeff, that your pacemaker has some kind of thing that calls your doctor or something? Yes. So there is some kind of communication Every going day, on with the pacemaker. Yeah. Every day there's a a signal when I'm. In, in bed, when I, you know, going to sleep, 
uh, where uh, they check the signal and they send it over to the hospital and it's checked every day. So, so there is some kind of wireless connection going on with your pacemaker, well, which, which could be the it, thing that would be easily hackable. Jeff, it's well, sure, because it's, it's uh, for me, it's set up right through a regular, uh, yeah, uh, radio, a, a regular signal like, uh, right, like, like a, a phone, phone. Yeah. a cell phone, yeah, because that, that's what the, or C, yeah, my phone. CPAP does that too. Oh, if you want to read uh, the the article, it's uh, McClatchy, M C C L A T C H Y. Uh, DC Bureau. <laughs> right. Okay. Zach, what will be? By yeah. the way, there's uh, there's Jack. Hello, Jack. How are you? You speak his name and he appears. Yeah, well, you know, I said it. Uh, I was talking about you when I said that when we lived in Houston. We never thought about hurricanes hitting oh, Houston. Hell, oh, hell no. Yeah. No, they, no. they, hit, they get, hit Galveston. Uh, they hit, what was that place I used to go? Uh, San Jacinto, the Jan mm -hmm, San mm -hmm. Jacinto area. Uh, Down where the... Uh, uh, yeah, the ship. Right, know, the uh, San Jacinto uh, Memorial. Right, which had a oh, boy. You, you, well, we 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 lost Brian no, I'm and, still here. and, and I'm still oh, here. you're still oh, there. Boy, your, your camera keeps but, going but on I, and off. But I thought I would give you a little bit of an update about what is uh, going on. The big concern in Houston right now, as they go about trying to begin to assess the the problem they have mm -hmm. is uh, with all of this water, it is a veritable uh, petri dish of disease now. Really? With E. coli and uh, chemicals and fecal matter and... Uh, well, that, something... But that's always, you know, that's always a fear. By the way, your camera keeps going on and off, on and off, Jack. Well, uh, my camera keeps uh, freezing and I keep trying to get it to unfreeze. Oh. But... Uh, it's not uh, freezing here. Well, it, is it freezing? Is it freezing? Yeah. I'm, I'm moving my head. No, it's freezing. Is my head moving? No, you're frozen. No. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, it's not me. I have a lot of bandwidth now. Braggart. <laughs> you always had a lot of width, in my opinion. Yeah. But, but uh, one of the things I saw today was an actual floating fire ant mound. Oh, I saw that. Oh, yeah, I saw that, too. I they, never knew that they could do that. It's they amazing. Also, they group don't. together to, to keep from drowning. It's like a beehive, they, yeah. Yeah, they make yeah. like an island. I have an idea, Jack. Why don't you hang up and call right mm -hmm. back? That, that, right, may, that, may clear your, right that may clear your problems up. Uh, bandwidth problems, folks. I don't have them anymore. But <clears> the bandwidth <throat> problems... So you say this, the show sounds better tonight? If yeah, physically? the audio. Yeah. Yeah. audio yeah, it hasn't it hasn't broke up at all. My, my, wait a minute, my audio never broke up, did it? Occasionally. It, occasionally it would, yeah. Yeah, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, we're pure fiber going out there. Uh, by the way, um, let me just tell you how bad this week has been for me. I got on the scale today. Mm-hmm. In five days, I lost eight pounds. I wish I could do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I've finally gone under 180. Wow. But, but no, no it's, it's, the, it's the cable system diet. Mm. You yeah. know. Uh, are you there, Jack, again? Well, I'm here, but uh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Let's see. And, now, and, again. and now you're frozen again. The other thing... Uh, I have, I have another on. idea, and that I would say would be to reboot your machine, but don't worry about I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to do that before I go on with the intersection. I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to run. Yeah. The other thing that's going on is here I am 300 miles away, and we're already having people line up for gasoline like, this, like you know, there's never going to be any. Yeah. Sure, uh, that's what happens. Every service station which, that I went by today, yeah. and luckily Donna made me go get gas over the weekend because she said, you know what's going to happen. Price goes up. Uh, yeah. Well, the well, price is going to go up on the East Coast, too, because there's a pipeline that goes from Texas to the East Coast uh, serving us uh, with, uh, with gas and oil and so on, and uh, that uh, supposedly has been severed. 
Well, I drove by a Chevron station today, and I noticed that the regular gas was three twenty-six a gallon, and premium was like three seventy-five or three ninety. Uh, and you know, and it's you know, they, this is we make our own stuff special for California. <laughs> you, know? Well, you know, every time that plant, every time that plant over there in Antioch or, or Richmond farts, they. Raise the when they size. say a pipeline, how big is the pipe? It could be six, eight inches. I mean, it's not like a big giant pipe it's like this. It's not huge, no. Oh. Because you got to be able to contain it. Wait, for the audience who didn't see the motion I was making. Oh, hold on a second. I'm in the wrong place. Let me... Uh, <laughs> Let me. Uh, uh, no, pipes, I, 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 the, the pipe. Uh, I, I was making. A, oh, look! I'm, I'm frozen too. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, yes, you are. Yes, I am. Uh, yes, yeah. I am. Frozen there, but, but I have. I have open. a way to fix this. See, not I have. I, I, I have a. Huh? No, I have a. a, a I can uh, first of all. I can get rid of me. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to try. Doing it well, I guess it's not. Um, oh, I know what to do. Hold on a second. I'll be back in a minute. Well, just, just keep, in Sacramento, three oh five. Keep talking, three, folks. Five, huh? Yeah. And well, what, guess, right. what is it uh, in uh, Texas, uh, Jack? Well, where I live, uh, I've seen it as high as three oh eight today. Really? But today. Yeah. And uh, uh, but just yesterday, mm -hmm. it was. 224. Wow. Mm -hmm. And over the weekend, it was $1.95, $1.96. Yeah. Well, I heard everybody in Houston's going to be a peroxide blonde now with that uh, easily blew up with the organic per, uh, peroxide. Yeah, that's ugly stuff. Yeah. Well, I, you know. Well, as long as the ammonia don't go, the ammonia can be ugly too. And in big aggregate amounts it becomes flammable well you remember bhopal uh india sure uh, do. uh yeah. I, in around 2000 yep. uh they, there was an ammonia plant that yep. blew up yeah. Two thousand people died yep and yep. it was union carbide that's yep. what it was. and um <clears throat> yeah, yeah so we, yeah, it's yeah, pretty deadly. where i worked we saw all those uh scared straight flicks of those plants blowing up and stuff they scare the shit out of you to, not blow up their plant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they had uh, uh, on uh, one of our local channels up here, not in the Houston area, but up, up where I live. They had an insurance guy on today that said, uh, and I heard you talking about this to some extent a little while ago, Alex. Yeah, that it may take Houston twenty years to rebuild. Really. And uh, also, uh, one of the things that somebody said a little while ago that is not true, uh, recently, because of executive decree, uh, some of the rules about rebuilding, about insurance companies and their liability in rebuilding have changed. Mm -hmm. And these folks may have to rebuild right where they are. So no getting out of the floodplain, if mm -hmm. if this one person is correct uh, that I heard, I heard interview on today. FEMA. I heard on uh, they had a guy from FEMA today talking about uh, what they were going to do with banks and mortgages and and so forth and insurance companies and I think FEMA is going to in intercede uh, about the building uh, in certain areas mm -hmm. that uh, shouldn't have been built on. Yeah, they're changing the floodplain map, I guess, or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, and then and and the government like that. can buy those things. I guess they'll eminent domain them or something. Well, we will see. Yeah, well, you know, because did. it's really it's really not in the interest of this administration to allow that to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, Trump's uh, speech that he gave, I think, either yesterday or today. Uh, was uh, you know uh, basically one of uh, hope, and uh, he was uh, he was he was reading off the teleprompter, uh, so you know it was written for him. Although, so and we all know when he reads off the teleprompter, he's lying. But he stayed he stayed on message. And, I was uh, impressed with uh, 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 with Vice President Pence today, 
Yeah. And the uh, talk uh, that he gave, it it sounded heartfelt, but you know, when you when you start dealing in the interests of billionaires and millionaires, I get awfully suspicious. Hmm. I just heard on the news also people that own, don't own their homes, you know, mortgage their homes. All these people that have all their mortgages may mm-hmm. lose their homes. Said in the news. I thought, wait a minute, how can they? Never seen on that though. Yeah, yeah explain that, Mike. Explain okay. that. Okay, it said in the news that people, or a lot of people in Houston, that mortgage their homes. You know, when they build their new homes and everything. Mm-hmm. He said they may lose their homes because they can't, because their mortgages are coming up to be paid. Well, you know, uh, Texas is kind of unique in the standpoint. Uh, what what is that noise? Well, that was me. Oh, okay. Texas uh, is kind of unique in the in the standpoint that, uh, and I'm not sure if they've changed this, but at one time you could not have a second mortgage in Texas. Hmm. Now they may have changed that. Well, I can't so, really. Yeah. Huh. So no homeowner's equity line of credit. You really? get, well, you can get a line of credit, but you can't yeah, get a, a second mortgage. Isn't that the same thing? No. No, because you've, you've heard people have second mortgages in California, and they also have a line of credit. So that's how they call the quote-unquote third mortgage. Well, I, I had invested in some properties uh, where if some people were in first position, second position, third position that were all part of the fix-up of the property. Hey, uh, maybe that's what's called a second mortgage, depending on the position that the, that it's in. The, you know, the bank might be in first position, and some and some other, uh, you know, to who gets paid off first. Uh, well, I mean, I, I you know, all I know is that these people are 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 going to have a real real problem getting the money because uh, they had trouble getting money with uh, who do you call it? Uh, Katrina. Katrina, yeah. So, yeah. Well, they're talking about bringing in temporary housing, uh, these uh, trailer-type things uh, to house people. And also the Navy is bringing ships over so that they can uh, start uh, rebuilding processes, the, government, uh, the, the, the Navy, uh, rebuilding and also uh, possible hospital, ship hospitals, and, and uh, maybe even keep people on the ships. There was a guy who owned a furniture store in Houston. Uh, his uh, store was not hit, and he had a 160,000-square-foot showroom, a bedding showroom, and he opened it up to uh, people yeah. that had no place to go. Um, before and- Osteen did. He <laughs> <laughs> was open before the end of church was. was. Yeah, That's but uh, yeah, this, this guy, uh, what, what, you know, what a great thing. Hey, 160,000 square foot. He says it's costing yeah. him $30,000 a day. Uh, well, Houstonians have certainly stepped up to their own uh, uh, behest. Uh, what keeps impressing me, and Alex knows Houston as well or better than I do, these folks that are getting out there and helping their neighbors with their boats and their uh, uh, I saw a guy uh, uh, with a a, a four wheel off road vehicle who was bringing folks uh, back to see their homes I had a chance to talk to my cousin uh, who had been in the hospital during most of this and find out that find out that he had a chance to get back to his house where he had not been able to go since Saturday is it and uh, and uh, he was very fortunate in that uh, very little damage. But, you know, this is just the first stage of seeing how bad well, you it know is. What, you know what's going to be interesting, though, and uh, uh, having I can speak with great experience on this, is how fast uh, these things clean themselves up. Uh, in San Francisco, when we had the earthquake, Loma Prieta quake back in what was that 69 uh, no, no 89. 89, 89 excuse 89. me see yes. October of 89 I'm gone 69 is that other number we like so yeah, much 89 uh, it, it, 
we were pretty well damaged. I mean, I thought, how long is it going to take? I mean, whole buildings had fallen and things like that. Six months. A year later, months. we were up to snuff. You know, we yeah. were getting there. A couple of buildings were still being rebuilt, but basically all the basic damage, including foundations and things like that, had been taken care of. Uh, now, I'm not saying this is going to be that fast. And well, they knocked Cyprus it, down, didn't they? And, and it, also, yeah, it, yeah, it also depends upon the government's response to this. You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, Katrina is still a mess, okay? Because uh, a lot of black people live down there, and who wants to give them money? Right? I wasn't going to say that. Uh, you you know, know, they'll, start, they'll, they'll start learning to read and write and wanting to vote. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Mayor Nagin, uh, like, nowhere to be found. And, uh, uh, the, you know, and he had to uh, authorize certain things uh, to happen. And uh, a, lot, a lot of help didn't start coming in because Nagin was uh, remiss in his job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, but, but the, the, the point was, is that to this day, you know, a lot of those places have not been rebuilt. Uh, the promises have been, you know, insurance companies have yet to pay off. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst part. I mean, if you have an insurance company, okay, let's, let's say for what it is. It's a bet, all right? You know, yep. and, the, and the bet is you're betting that a disaster <laughs> is going to hit you, and they're betting it's not. And uh, chances are they're going to win. A lot Be of people in, in New Orleans didn't have insurance. I, well, no. Uh, well, uh, I know a lot of people didn't. Flood a lot insurance. of people used to, only 20% of the people have insurance, flood insurance. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, but how, it burns. Uh, and we were talking about it the other night when we had the big, uh, uh, or, or we had the, what was it? Was it the earth? Well, no, it wasn't the earthquake. It was something else. It was those storms that we had, and half of Marin got flooded oh, and no, so on. So, so when I stayed on your sofa? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't, because, I couldn't, you, I, I couldn't get out of my house to go to work because the Golden Gate Bridge was blocked off because the entire hillside had come down on the on the roadway. Right. Uh, I, you know, I live below the Altamira Hotel, yeah. and uh, so they evacuated me, and then they wouldn't let us out of Sausalito. They closed off uh, 101. So you see what a good person I am tunnel. during a tragedy. I put them up at my place. Right. Yeah. I stayed on a sofa. Yeah. <laughs> For a week. <laughs> Yeah, we I, even did the show and you know something? There. It's amazing. I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember it. Phil, but he's trying to say he slept since then. Yeah, really. Well, he doesn't remember anything. But any know, that's, that's, look, yeah. I'm I'm not remembering stuff. This is another thing that's bothering me. I'm yeah, literally. I think losing it. Um, no, you're not. You never no, have. You, you know. You know what's really getting to stress. me? It's stress. What? It's really getting to me passwords mm. you know yeah you know I, I look I, you fucking assholes when you want a password out of me let me decide if i don't want it strong or weak let me decide <laughs> whether Wrong i'm willing thing. to take a chance okay well, don't tell me you must have an uppercase you must have at least two numerals oh. and you must have like an ampersand or something like that and then yeah. i'm going how do i remember all this shit so i then write it yeah. down somewhere and and you can't it, find the book. Well, you know what I found is that you, if you do it all in Chrome and it saves yeah. your passwords, you can yeah. go into that section on Chrome and see your passwords. Now, Marjorie bought that thing that Rob has. Yeah, but have you, has it worked? I can't, I got I got it. I have a th thirty day free trial, and I have yet to figure out how the fucker works. Oh, I love it! I love it. Yeah, talk to Rob. You know, he, he uses it. You know, he well, can, I mean, Chrome uh, does the same thing. It's just, it's not as safe a vault, but I don't give a shit. You yeah. know? I mean, they don't get the idea that I don't, let me be the arbitrator in whether I want myself to be compromised or not. 90% of the programs I use uh, uh, force me to use strong passwords. Uh, I finally came up with one password that and i'll give it to you off air it is so perfect uh that it works for everything it's the well i have one i have one like that too and i it's one i can remember easily yeah. but yeah. my my point is i don't give a shit tell me do you want this account with or without a password i don't care <laughs> i really they don't do, care bro. i don't have that much to lose for one reason or another they hi brian care. yeah Hello? 
they, they either they don't want some liability or they don't want somebody hacking into it. Uh, they can change stuff and then you end up blaming them. Well, no, but I, I'll sign. I'll sign a release. Okay, any whatever it takes, so I don't have. But I mean, I've now got when I that's the wrong password. Then I have to figure out what it is. But then I mm -hmm. I can open up my uh, I use notes from uh, Microsoft uh, from Apple and I put them all in there. Whenever yeah. and I, I'll go look it up and go. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Now, okay. uh, just yesterday, I had a password and I couldn't remember it, and and I was sure I, it was one of the usual suspects, but I couldn't remember it and it, nothing worked. So you tell it to send you uh, uh, to reset the password. Then when you go to reset the password, it won't let you use one of the last five passwords that you've used. <laughs> so well, I have a thing when I sign when I sign on to uh, to a Verizon now. It wants my, you know, my, e I'm using an email address of my ID. I think I can change the ID name, and I'm going to do that because I'm tired of writing that down. Did you go from AT&T to Verizon? No, I went to Verizon for my, for Fios, for the internet, oh. and for the uh, TV and all of that. That's Verizon. Oh. Uh, uh, where, but where was I? Uh, oh, so, um, um, you know, I mean, I just... I, I'm just, I, I had so many passwords, and the other day, I told you the story, I was trying to sign on to my personal Skype account, okay, because I do all my interviews on that, so that Mike doesn't call me during an interview when he sees that I'm up. I, 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 don't worry, I'm... Yeah, you know, because, uh, uh, but other people might try too. Uh, so I go to, I have a private account for the interviews, all right, and I forgot the name. Of the and it kept locking me out because I didn't have the right name or password and so on and I was going crazy so I went and opened up a new account and then all of a sudden I figured out what the old the name was for my account like I so I, I should forks. remember it right yeah. uh, well I mean, no, I can tell you what it is it, it's uh, a Bennett uh, two ten is 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 because you can look that up and see that you can call me. You know, well, on your personal one, it says uh, Alex Bennett on my screen. Well, yeah, I, yeah. So it does. Oh, so you can make yeah. it say anything. You yeah, want. you can make that say. You can make it say Phil Shithead. You know, you know, you can do that. Anyway, so I do uh, it all the time. But, but <laughs> so I made so I, in panicking, I went and created a new account, and then I put ten bucks in it so that I can make the calls, and then I went and finally figured out what my old one was and promptly forgot what was the new one I had created. And so now there's an account somewhere that I will never, ever use. Okay. What is Amy calling for? Don't you guys have your own show? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here so Amy can talk about the fact that her hometown has no water. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, that's no. true. If y'all have been hearing about Beaumont, that's where I'm actually from. Is Beaumont, Texas. Yeah. And they announced that they uh, they didn't have water about 5 a.m. this morning. And may so, not have water until Tuesday. They're clearing right. out the hospitals. And My stuff. My sister was planning on going home on Sunday, and she's not going home on Sunday. What? And break up the the Tubman family reunion? <laughs> I was actually calling about the passwords. Um, I have developed a system uh -oh. where I have a, a special folder in my Yahoo email that I, I use Yahoo for nothing but this. And I send myself an email. I In the subject line, I put whatever it is, login. And then in the body, I don't put the whole thing. I'll put like proud email. I know what that is. Right. And then I put, like, 1ST, first street I lived on, um, L4, 2 pound. That means the last four numbers of my second phone number. Yeah. And then I might, you know, if I have to have a special character, I'll put, like, R-A. That means replace yeah, but the then, A's with then let's size. say somehow you have oh, to change too, that password. Way too complicated. They make, it, they make you change I, it to an... You, know, you can't, like, go back to... You can't go back to one of the old passwords you used. No, but I want to use that one again. Fuck you. You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, what exactly. I do... Because I... Especially when I was a realtor, there's, like... 30 different things that I had logins to and they all had different rules and they all yeah. had different times that they you had to change them every so often. So I had to have a way that I could go and figure out what it was well, well, without I, yeah. just 
w without getting in, w the without getting into all of that i mean i just i just uh, uh, pa Patrick, you've been quiet. What do you think? Don't you think you should just be able to use any fucking password you want to use, whether it's strong or weak or whatever? Yeah, I, I do. I got locked out of my... Uh, I wanted to go pay my... And they changed the security uh, features without notifying them. So now I couldn't get in, and I had to call the company... And they, they were not enough to walk me through it, but I ended up walking myself out for 40 or 60 minutes. What is all that noise? <laughs> what is all that noise? That's, because it's, it's, it's uh, Brian like, eating chips. Who? Just what? <laughs> Brian's having dinner. <laughs> oh. Boy, because it, it, uh, have you been, uh, do you keep that volume thing up when you call us now? Uh, 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 Ryan. No. Ryan's Patrick. got his headset Patrick. on. He's driving. Patrick, do you keep that little? Uh, you know, I told you about the volume switch. Are you? Is who he, are you talking to, Alex? Patrick. I'm talking to Patrick. Patrick. You, yeah. Yeah. Do Do you have the volume switch up that I told you to use? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just make sure it stays at a good point because that way yeah. you don't. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, well. Wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold on issue. a second. Wait a minute. Patrick was telling us his his story. So I, I get, get done. I, you know, I lock myself up. I get to have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait. You're put in the penalty box for thirty minutes or an hour. But the gal that helped me, she gave me a new password, and she took wait and it a Somebody is making a lot of rattling noise, and it isn't Brian. <laughs> Not me. That sounds like a bird in a cage or what? something. Is there something in your place, uh, Amy, that's making noise? Mine's quiet. What is that? Do you hear it, everybody? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Sounds like somebody's shuffling something around in metal. Who stole the strawberries, Captain? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, here comes <laughs> Renee, and I don't know if we can fit her in, to tell you the truth. Because well, we, listen, I'm going to click out oh, okay, because go, uh, um, I've got things to do, okay. including going to the bathroom okay. before the beginning well, of you're, the Well, your, your signal is fine now. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, Renee, we can get nine people on here without jamming up the picture. Hello, yeah, so Renee. Renee yeah. How are you? Anyway, you, you got to go. Uh, okay, he's got to go. So, wait a minute. Let me just get him out of the picture here. Remove from this group. There we go. Well, you had a full house then uh, with Renee. Yeah. Well, we had uh, a full house, yeah. 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 So, so I went to earlier, but I was under the bathtub stuffing a hole with stainless with steel wool. Oh dear. Why? And I didn't, I didn't think you wanted to show that on television. <laughs> why? Why? Why were you filling a hole with steel wool? Is it a mouse problem? Yeah. And and, exactly. and, and steel wool is like a, a like a steel fence, right? Right. But I see a cat in the background. Is there a cat there? There's two cats. And you still got a mouse problem. It's probably other things besides mouses, like geckos. And... <laughs> well, okay. Cat, don't work. Not what is that fucking noise? Cats do not I think work. That, that, I think that's road noise. No, no. It, is it road noise? Uh, mute yourself, will you, Brian? Let's see if it's you. Yeah, it's yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's him. Okay. So, Alex, I heard you earlier today, and you were talking about how all of this is getting to be too much for you as far as all the technology. But, you know, your, stuff, your problems with technology are, one, almost cutting edge, and number two, they're not the same problems every night. So you're having to figure shit out all the time no, no, that no, people no, don't no. have what, to deal what, what with. What drove me crazy this week and literally off the deep end okay where i still am by the way i'm just as i say doing a marvelous job of hiding it um is having to rely on other people to solve a problem that is impeding me from doing something and mm -hmm. and and not getting anybody any two people who have the same answer you know today i finally got a call from the cable i called the cable company to cancel and she said why are you and i told her and I said they finally restored my two-way stuff, uh, 
you know, my all house DVR thing on Monday. I said, but by that time it was too late. I had already told Fios to come out, pull your stuff out and put my stuff in. And uh, she said, well, I have a, a note here about the whole process of that thing. They had to go to another department to get an okay and they didn't get it till Monday. I said, then why was I told on Thursday that a guy was pushing the button and it should be on in 10 minutes? <clears throat> You know, it's like one person never tells the other person what the other person is doing, and you're running a technology company, for Christ's sake. And they rely on the notes in the screen to come pop up, and if somebody yeah. doesn't put the good notes in, you're screwed. And today, today I decided, I decided that I would uh, uh, call Fios to see if we could get somebody out here, but I finally got to somebody on the inside in a private number. But uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I was... I called Verizon just to, you know, maybe see what could be done. And I have to say one thing about Spectrum. Whenever I would call them, I maybe waited a minute tops. The wait will be 11 minutes. What's this? You're well, you running a signature fucking... signature service, you said. And they were supposed to handle your stuff immediately. Yeah, but they handled uh, the stuff immediately anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that was in the beginning. Yeah, they did that. But, you know, as time you know, it went on. It drives me ape but, no, but, 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 but wait a minute. 11 minutes and you're running a company like that? And if you see that your time ever goes that high, you have to say, how many more people do we have to put on to clear this problem up? Yeah. You know? Anyway, what were you saying, uh, Kevin? Uh, you call these places and you punch in your number and you punch in your account number and you tell them your name on the title and all that stuff. So and then they pick up and they say, hello. What, can I have your name and your account number? And they go right. through the whole shit again, and then they transfer you, mm -hmm. and you got to go through the whole shit again. Yeah, you ask mm -hmm. them, why did I bother entering this stuff? Yeah, I, it's uh -huh. like, I go, zero, 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 zero. Oh, well, there was uh, one um, Seagate uh, reports or something like that, that back in my programming days, that they even had a menu for what whole music you wanted. Yeah. Nah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, that was a yeah, great. What, 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 Mike? Mike's got his hand up. Okay, you know what's funny? And also, it says, you ever notice? It says, your call's important. Your time wait is three it's minutes. You know, the, uh, and I love when they say, your, your, like your call is important to us. The wait will be 20 minutes. I've heard that one before. Yeah. Yeah, or the voice recognition, you're saying uh, one thing. Now, I do have to say something. Most, oh. com most companies have gotten really good about this. Okay, I mean, the, the, I, I have not, uh, Microsoft, I had some wait time, a lot of wait time, and Verizon had a lot of wait time. But a lot of other companies I call, you know, it's like a minute, two minutes. You find that, Jeff? You're nodding that you agree with me. Uh, turn on I your, often Jeff. call, uh, I call the hospital and things like that. Yeah. They're pretty good. I think they are normal. Well, they want to answer the calls as fast as possible because you might be dead by the time they get to you. You know. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to talk to a real person, sometimes it's really tough. You got to go through all the menus right. to talk to a real person. Uh, so my friend said, yeah. "What you do is, uh, with the voice recognition, three times it says, uh, are you having trouble?' Because he'll go." Abra -abra -abra -abra. And it, it doesn't understand. And then he'll, they'll say, you know, can you repeat that? And the third time he'll repeat the same thing again. It says, oh, we're having trouble. Let's put you through to someone. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, say, uh, I just keep saying customer service, customer service, customer service. Patrick, what, what, uh, go ahead. I, same thing as my Phil said. I'll just scream into the phone, give me a fucking human being. <laughs> possible. But the other thing notice is I forget who it was that I talked to um, but the wait time was going to be like 35 minutes and then they get the option of them calling you back yeah and, I was just going to say I fought 55 minutes which to me is fine I would rather them call me in an hour than me sit there for an hour when I could be doing something else See, they can't call me back at work because they ha I have an extension so they call the main number, and then they have to dial two more digits. And mm -hmm. so you, it doesn't automatically do that. So mm -hmm. I can't, I can't take that option. And mm -hmm. all I'm you know, saying yeah, is, if you're a, running, if you're running, if you're running a major company and you can't answer a call within three minutes, 
then you should put more people on the phones answering them. You know, that, that, that <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, a company like Verizon, a behemoth, if you will, in the telecommunications industry, when they, when I call them and they say there's an 11 minute, 12 minute wait, that's embarrassing. You yeah. know, oh, I would think. That is embarrassing. Yes, care. Amy. Oh, um, I used to have to call the child support division of attorney, Texas Attorney General in yeah. uh, Bluffkin, Texas. Yeah. And I clocked it because I had one of those phones at, at work that shows you how long. Yeah. Over an hour and a half, and I was still waiting. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. I'll tell you the I great, just gave uh, it. But I ran yeah. it. You were talking about passwords when I first called in. Yeah. I ran into an issue. I've got a campaign account, and I had my treasurer go down to the bank, and she's signed on to the account. She's got all the access. And then she was trying to set something up, and she couldn't get in online. So I gave, here's my login, here's my password. Well, she still couldn't get in because then it had the security questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what about the security questions security. that aren't your security questions? Oh, I, I, you know something? Well, sometimes, I don't know why this happens, yeah. but I suddenly it says, well, you have to answer a few security questions, you know, that I, they apparently feel they previously gave me, and I'm looking at these questions and going, I've never seen these questions in my life. Like, exactly. what, what is your favorite? Exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. what, what, what is your favorite sport? I would never pick that as a question. Okay, <laughs> I would <laughs> never <laughs> pick that as a question. Absolutely. Yeah, Kevin, you my favorite you sport is water sports. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't care what the answer is. So you pick the first question and put bullshit in the answer. Then go to the second question and put bullshit for the answer. And then put the third one. Put bullshit for the answer, and it'll go through. And then you remember next time, I just put bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the. See, I like that. I, 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 I have I have a I have a I have an account where the security question when I call them up they say uh, it's a saying and it says uh, don't do the crime if you can't uh, do the and I the answer is time. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, I I from I, the uh, thing. I I I have one that said who who what was your nickname as a child? So yeah. that one's well, easy. Well, you had maybe. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then it said, "Who was your favorite? Uh, who was your closest friend?" And I had I, I remembered that immediately. And I'm I can't remember what account I had to do. I have to do that on every time I go to it. But yeah, they asked pet, uh, the last mo uh, favorite actor. Yeah, don't even worry about it. Just put whatever Mother's, you want. Uh, main name. Good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one I just put. I just write down the incarnation. Maria Pat Patricia Bond. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, put it in, put it in, then this thing goes, what? Just be, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a question of being uh, uh, nasty and mean with, with people, with, with, with technology, which, by the way, does not have a soul, so it's not insulted yeah, exactly. by anything you do. Exactly. It's <laughs> like my wife. Whenever she sees Donald Trump on television and he's saying something, she yells at the TV set, oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Like he's ever going to hear it. And he keeps on And then talking. she goes online to his account and says, you know, when it's a Donald Trump tweet, he go, she goes, fuck you. Like he's ever going to read it. You know, how many fuck yous well, does she think they get every single day in the Donald Trump Twitter account? I'm with Marjorie. And two I, of them I, are from Amy, yeah, okay? I, um, I don't know if anybody else saw this. If you're on Twitter... But Vicente Fox, the former president of Mexico, yeah. uh, tweeted, I don't care how many times you tweet it, Mexico is not paying for your fucking wall. <laughs> well, yeah. they offered some money for uh, Harvey relief, and I think Trump is going to, said he's going to take it and then use it for the wall. Uh, I, I <laughs> well, see. Well, it, that's, I can't money too. So much, hey, money listen, so uh, the, the theme is playing, and it's time for me to get out of here. I'm not here tomorrow night because I'm taking the night off, like I didn't take the night off last night. Uh, but uh, and I may or may not go out to Fire Island, but uh, uh, I need the day off, and it's go and get some. It was planned anyway. Uh, but Amy and Jack will be here doing their 
their bit. Uh, thanks to uh, Kevin. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Brian. Thanks to Amy. Thanks to Phil. Thanks to Patrick. Thanks to Mike. And thanks, uh, Renee, for calling us tonight. Is there anybody else that called that I forgot? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I have a lobster. Oh, Jack Bishop as well. Yeah. Go have a lobster. Yeah. Go, what? Go, go have, have a lobster. lobster. Yeah. yeah. Water Island. You know, uh, nice lobster. I can have anything I want. I lost eight pounds this week. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Wave goodbye, okay? Great time. All right, okay. (laughs) Good time tonight. Yeah, good time. Good time, good time, good time. Let me say goodbye to all of them and let me sign off so the next show can sign on. There, I've done all that, uh, that, uh, what what do we call it? Uh, uh, Ritual, okay? Hey, I'm not here tomorrow night. Like, that's something new. Uh, I'm not here tomorrow night. Hopefully, I'll be back on uh, Tuesday. And uh, Jack and Amy are next. I'll be back on Tuesday and uh, hopefully a little rested. I'm just, I wasn't going to go out to Fire Island, and then I decided, hey, I just need somewhere where none of this is here. Okay? Anyway, uh, we'll see you again uh, Tuesday. In the meantime... As always, uh, it's the same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, yeah, you know, tell her I love her, okay? All right, bye.